Why the shirt is so low? When you look at cumulatively at the end of the year, the news reaches about 98 percent of the audience. And Hindi news amongst the 70 percent of the audience is being audience. Hindi GC, on the other hand, which most of the people think that all of us watch, reaches about 56 percent of the audience. So slightly less than the Hindi GC. But news is it really enough? Why people are not watching it? At the end of the year, you accumulate so many audience, but at, the, at, at every day level, you are only calculating about 5 or 6 percent market share. So my question is, are you entertaining enough in your shows? And this is what editors and anchors and the newspapers have to do. Second one is, uh, uh, I, had a, I had a shot, but uh, I would not play that right now because it will make it controversy. Uh, a new news channel got launched. It has exporting all over the country, where all the anchors were standing in a, in a V-shape. If you compare that with any other news channel, the same visual, same anchor dressing, same way of looking, and it was all over India. There was no differentiation between the two news channels when the anchors were dressed. They were standing in a row, they were holding a mic, and unless you don't notice the mic, the chances are you will not notice which channel it is, because most of the anchors will do the job from one channel to another channel. So, my big question is, is are the anchors adding real value to the audience? And are they the reason that people are not watching news on them? There was a very interesting episode which Ravi Shonji narrated me long back that a branch of the world has changed so much that I don't know what to do in news. Because the first, so news has become a super fast express train. Where the first news is that, that a particular minister is going about, second news is this, that he is there in this particular place while climbing the stairs, third one is that he is there in a plane, and this way the speed news of 100. Now, unfortunately, that's the news item which is generating the maximum rating on the television news channel. Which reflects that what kind of talent or what kind of news that you put on the channel. I will give you an example which is my basically third point. Is that that is the bar responsible for creating such news or is it a question of talent? I will give you an example. Satyanyo Jayate created more news in the media and, and created much deeper impact on the society as a program on Star Plus than many news channels ever managed to do. Satyanyo Jayate originally was launched on Star News in 2005. It had an anchor, it had a story. Nobody remembers it. Three years later, or maybe four years later, Satyendra Jaisal was launched with Amir Khan, spending crores of rupees. And the show, as we know it, is one of the finest shows in the real industry. And why it was like that? Because the investment that went into producing Satyendra Jaisal, then Star Plus was far, far higher than what we did in the Star Wars. So it's actually a such a kind of story. Uh, so you have low market share, you don't get enough money, you produce crappy content and you don't get talent. What Ravish rightly pointed out that the show begins with saying should work. So Ghanshanti is available, just catch him somehow. In the morning there is a rush to catch this spokesperson. And uh, rightly he said in the Hindi language to will move over the links in the There is no preparation. And most of the time the show is put what is happening on the street. Now, can you imagine as a business, if we are trying to run a business where we are just job is to produce something on air, which any uh, decent person in a, in a shop outside will have a conversation and say that, okay, you are not any really value to the person who is going to listen to you. Why should somebody give you in this 20 minutes in a day -to day? Unless you are really adding the value that he is not going to get the words. And that's a question that people, people, have, uh, people are asking from the new genre. More what content is 
running on the new channel and that's what editors and anchors have to think. Cricket match over, ball by ball commentary running on the new channel. As if somebody by accidentally also comes on your channel to tell them go and watch cricket. Why are you here? And there is a rush. They say if you don't do it, we don't get it. We don't get the audience. A movie getting released on Thursday and Friday, there is a huge show on every new channel. These producers and actors are very smart enough to move from one actor to one channel to another channel to another Just to promote their movie. And what TV channels are doing? Telling the audience, boss of the TV, go and watch this movie. Don't watch this movie. And third one, most of our politicians are thrilled, including my friends of the television news channels. We are getting free for this. I can tell you, no matter how ideals, uh, or idealism you would like to believe in, nowhere else in the world it is, it is, uh, it is like this. The news media is a very regulated industry and you can't do that. But that's a serious loss to business. So, if you, if you, if you put on the, what, what you call, what is happening on the street, you plan a day where nothing serious is being done, what do you expect the advisors to pay you? And what business are we in? Are we in a business of showing news and asking consumers to pay? Can any channel here demand even 50 rupees from a consumer per month? I can tell you next day you shut up. And why it is like that? If you are in a business of news, you can't ask consumers to pay. And that's the business model that I think all the editors and CEOs need to think about it. That if our business is actually then serving advertising through content, then there is a rush now amongst the many large news channels not to run ads at all. And one of the CEOs that I discussed, he said that that's not part of my strategy right now to run ads. Then I don't know what the business model is and why are we in this business. My seventh point is this, that look at the Fox News and I'm going to play a small video towards the end of my speech which I'll, when I'll tell you people please play that video. One particular program on that channel gets about over $2 billion in revenue. That's the size, maybe of the, maybe of the size of the largest TV network and maybe a little more than that. One particular program on a news channel in America. What we get is nothing. If you advertise on a news channel and consider the kind of rush that the politician has to appear on different news channels, uh, propagate their view, one side view, this side view, and then they can sell something. If the news channel works so hard to, to get those audience, they get what one hundredth of the rate of the GC channel. Is it fair? The whole world today is discussing about the TRI rule will destroy the news industry. Forget about TRI. The world is changing so fast amongst us that Anurag is here with the audience. We should no more be the news broadcasting award or news broadcasting event. It should be actually the news event and news people are watching not only through broadcasting. We will all be taking content and people to watch. Ravish is right example here who is more popular. I think, I always tell this to Ravish that you are universally popular with your channel rating. I mean, <laughs> that kind of popularity that he is and look at the rating that comes. So, you know, so, so people are watching him, not necessarily through his TV channel. Right. Meg Whitman, who uh, the ex-CEO of HTV, has launched a site called Freebie. They raised one billion dollars of funding in just uh, one month of launch. And you know what they are doing. They are creating news. And they are creating news each news like that does not cross more than six minutes. They are here in India. The millennials are already on the phone and tablets watching the news and people like us would be working in those six minutes video. Think about it, how many of us have got the talent to work there. And if we have to change the way things are going to come in the broadcast business, I would like you to see the last three and a half minute video that I am going to play and see and, and just understand why even after being a one-sided show which many people can play, the program itself does more than two billion dollars a year. Just what the video.
A group of about 60 Asian organizations is suing Harvard University. They say their affirmative action hurts Asian students, and they have the numbers to prove it. According to a study by Princeton University, Asian applicants must score 140 points higher on the SAT than white students do, 270 points higher than black students do, and 450 points higher than African American students just to have the same shot at getting in. Is that fair? Go to stand with someone who thinks it is fair. Dave Chen is a Harvard alum who supports affirmative action. He's part of a group that is fighting the lawsuit we just mentioned when he joins us now. Dave, thanks a lot for coming on. But let me read you a quote from a man who does this for a living. His name is Brian Taylor. He runs a business that helps Asian students get into elite colleges. He said this to Boston Globe last year. He said, we will make them, the Asian applicants, appear less Asian when they apply. And why would he do that? He does that because colleges don't want too many Asians. And you know this really well. And yet you're defending it. I don't understand them at all. They're discriminating against Asians. They're open about it. Everybody knows it. And yet that's okay because why? Well, like I said, you know, there isn't a quota system because the numbers have actually increased. And I think they've actually increased. Not proportional to increase in applications. Well. But my question remains the same, which is, is it okay to discriminate on the basis of race? I was raised to believe it's not. You apparently think it is. Is it? No, I, I think that we have to recognize that we don't live in a vacuum and that racial discrimination still exists and that we have to account for the fact that some people have a head start. And if you're going to advocate for a race neutral policy, you're basically reinforcing the head start that some people already have. Wait, and your solution is imperfect, but you know, it's, it's needed. It's part of the solution. Is it, is it racial discrimination to not let somebody into college based on his race? Can we disagree on that? Is it? If that is the sole criteria that someone is not admitted into a college, then there would be something wrong with that, but that's just not the way that colleges work. They are not admitted to space solely on race. There are other factors that are involved. And, you know, I've talked about a lot of others that have benefited people, such as legacy, such as whether or not you went to a private school, mm -hmm. if you're from a and there are a lot of advantages. Those are not, those are not that sectors. Factors. I mean, you're, 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 di you're diverting from the question. And, it's just, and you know that you don't have an answer to this. But if racial discrimination is wrong, and I believe it is, then it's just wrong. I mean, there's a moral element here, I think, right? I, I agree that racial discrimination is wrong, but to, to say that you're starting off from a clean slate as an applicant, when, you know, if you are a Mexican-American student and you're worried that your parents might get deported by the next president, okay. you're going to be a clean slate. Yeah, it's about true. Then what? Uh, I'll Children are not responsible for the sins of previous ages, okay? No 18-year-old Asian or black or Hispanic kid is responsible for slavery or Jim Crow or the sins of America. I'm sorry, the punishment comes to those things is grotesque. Uh, you would agree with that, right? Uh, I would agree with that, but then why do bad things seem to happen disproportionately to uh, these races that were subjected to racism in the past? You want to say that racism doesn't exist, but I'm not saying that racism is that that's right. It's because you know African Americans are being you know killed even if they're not. I mean, this look, I, mean, I wouldn't disagree with you. I'm just saying the answer is not more racism. I guess that's the point. Just maybe going in circles. Jake, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, now, just imagine the show that been happening in India. Obviously, Sadhguru is well known Republican. I mean, person uh, he writes on Republican philosophy. He's a commentator, but this particular issue, if it is there, there will be at least 40 faces sitting on the screen, you will be able to see how many speaking men. There will be uh, almost five happening, and Andrew will be jumping from his chair, going after somebody to calming down, and all kinds of drama, despite Andrew without having any substance. I think that's what we need 